here's where we need to start. Bill Gates once made the observation, you know, for a lot of folks, they tend to overestimate the rate of change that is going to occur on a two-year basis, but they underestimate the rate of change that is going to occur on a 10-year basis. Do we have any idea what the healthcare system is going to look like in 2022? Do we have any idea as, as to what's going to happen from a scientific perspective? Well, we do. You know, and, 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 and a lot of it is pretty obvious because a lot of it is happening right now. You know, back in uh, January 15, 2020, uh, 2010, I was the closing keynote speaker for, in, in Washington for a conference called the World Healthcare Innovation and Technology Congress. A lot of really fascinating folks there from technology companies, healthcare companies, politicians, Newt Gingrich was on stage. I walked out to close the conference and I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm walking out as a patient. I'm walking out as a patient on the date January 15, 2020, 10 years to the date from this conference, and I want to tell you what the healthcare system looks like today. I want to tell you what happened, what changed, and what provided us so much significant opportunity to deal with the reality of the fiscal cliff which we were faced back in those dark and dreary days of 2010. Here's where I began. What we recognized by the year 2020, 2022, is that the healthcare system underwent a massive transformation. Think about what is occurring today. The healthcare system, it is a system in which we fix you after you're sick. You develop a condition, chronic or otherwise, we diagnose it, we come up with a form of treatment. By the year 2010, 2015, 2022, 2025, we don't know exactly when, the entire healthcare system will have gone upside down. We will have transitioned to a system in which we understand with a high degree of accuracy what it is likely you are to become sick with, what chronic conditions you are susceptible, what chronic conditions you are likely to develop. And rather than fixing you after you're sick, we will have re-architected the philosophy, the methodology, the architecture of the healthcare system based upon that knowledge. This is a huge train trend. If you think about what is occurring here, the entire healthcare system goes upside down. What is driving this in a huge way is genomic medicine. You know this, you know, you know where we are. We can look at a couple of hundred strands of your DNA today and we can determine with a high degree of accuracy what it is you are likely to develop during your lifetime. We can identify your risk factors. This is nothing new. Genomic medicine, preventative medicine concepts have been around 10, 15, 20 years. But here's where it gets so interesting. What is happening right now is the development of the human genomic sequencing machines is now entering the curve that we call Moore's Law. Because what is happening is Silicon Valley, the computers that evolve at the speed of Apple, the companies that evolve at the speed of Apple, are now designing the next generation genomic sequencing machines. And so what is happening is genomic sequencing machines are being subjected to Moore's Law. What's Moore's Law? It's the law that a computer processor doubles in power every year and its cost cuts in half. And this is what is happening with the cost to sequence, you know, DNA. It is absolutely collapsing. Do you know that it cost $3 billion to sequence the first human genome? And by 2009, that cost was down to $100,000. By mid-year this year, it's estimated to be about $10,000. It's estimated in just a few months it's going to be down to 1000 bucks. Five years from now, we'll be able to walk into Radio Shack and we'll be able to buy a little $5 human genome sequencing machine, you know, for our own home use. You know, it sounds like a joke. But think about how quickly the science and the technology is changing. And think what this means in terms of chronic conditions. Think about what this means in terms of what we do in the world of pharmaceuticals. Think about what this means in terms of where we go. The long-term substantive transformative trend is very real. In the world of pharmaceutical care, we are moving from an era of blockbuster drugs, one drug fits all, to pharmacogenetics, in which we can design particular pharmaceuticals for particular genes, gene traits for people suffering from particular chronic conditions. We can narrow in to such a degree because the cost to sequence the genome to help us undertake the research to develop very specific gene-oriented pharmaceuticals is going to undergo a massive cost collapse. We're going to wake up 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 8 years from now, doesn't matter when, but we're going to wake up and we're going to go, wow, that was a really big change. 
And that fundamentally and forever changed how we approached chronic disease management.